Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Today we're going to talk about the Umayyad Caliph Abdul Malik. Last time we talked about his father Marwan, and now we're going to continue the series of Umayyad Caliphs with Abdul Malik. So he had become Caliph, but Abdullah ibn Zubair controlled Arabia and Iraq for the most part. Uh, the Kharijites controlled Eastern Arabia and parts of Iran. The Shia and Kufa, however, were rebelling against Ibn al-Zubair. So in Kufa, the Shia were wanting people to recognize Muhammad ibn al-Hanafiya, who was the son of Ali. They wanted people to recognize him as Caliph. So they believed that uh, Muhammad ibn al-Hanafiya was the Mahdi, that he was the eschatological figure who was going to usher in the good at the end times and bring back Prophet Jesus, Nabi Isa alayhi salam. And so they were propping Ali's son Muhammad up as the Mahdi. And even many non-Shia in the area began to follow this movement. And you might remember from the earlier videos, Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, he started marching from Syria to Iraq to face the Ibn al-Hanafiya supporters. Okay, And the Ibn al-Hanafiya supporters, they were led by a man named Mukhtar bin Abi Ubaid bin Mas'ud al-Thaqafi. And the Ibn al-Hanafiya supporters, they went into battle with the slogan, Vengeance for Hussein. They, they wanted to get Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad. They had blood for him. They wanted to get him. They were bloodthirsty for him. And so Ubaidullah's army included soldiers from the Qais tribe. Uh, but the Qais, if you remember from the previous videos, they were still very upset and reeling from their defeat at Marj Rahit. Okay? And that, that happened two years earlier. And because of that, they wanted to get revenge on the Umayyads. And so at the last moment, they deserted Ubaidullah's army. And so Ubaidullah with his remaining soldiers were then subsequently slaughtered by Mukhtar's forces, the Ibn al-Hanafiya movement. And so the Shia militia, they won and they secured northern Iraq as well as Kufa through this victory. Meanwhile, you had this uh, tribe called the Judhem tribe in Palestine that rebelled against Abdul Malik bin Marwan and they declared allegiance to Ibn al-Zubair instead. Uh, the problem is Ibn al-Zubair didn't send them reinforcements and Abdul Malik, um, he made a treaty with the Byzantine Empire or like a ceasefire and he quickly defeated this Judhem tribe and set his sights then on the Zubaydid forces. Then in 689, Abdul Malik, he left Damascus to fight the Zubaydids in Iraq, but his cousin, Amr bin Sa'id ibn al-As, seized Damascus in Abdul Malik's absence, and he tried to claim the Umayyad Caliphate for himself. Abdul Malik had to turn around and quickly executed his cousin Amr. And still the Qais tribe was rebelling against the Umayyads. And Abdul Malik had to crush them and finally got rid of them in the summer of 691. And it was only then that he could really make a military campaign against the Zubayrids. Then Abdul Malik easily defeated the Zubayrid forces in Iraq and captured Kufa at the end of 691. Abdul Malik then sent his commander, Hajjaj ibn Yusuf, with 2,000 Syrians to capture Mecca from Abdullah ibn al-Zubair. You might have heard this in the previous videos. Hajjaj ibn Yusuf encamped in Ta'if and more reinforcements, more Umayyad reinforcements came to back him up. They then marched upon Mecca and they sieged the city in 692. And they had the city blockaded for six months, so nothing could go in or out for six months. 
and uh, a lot of people defected from Abdullah bin Zubair's army and eventually Abdullah bin Zubair was killed outside the city in September 692. Gregorian. In the sieging, the Kaaba itself was destroyed and had to be rebuilt. Some think this might have been on purpose because Abdullah ibn Zubair, he had uh, built some stuff on the Kaaba, remade the Kaaba in a sense, so they think that maybe this was intentional. The Umayyads wanted to destroy it so they could rebuild it themselves. When uh, uh, Hajjaj ibn Yusuf occupied the city of Mecca, um, he wasn't so great to the Sahaba. He lashed uh, one of them, Anas, and he then uh, one of his soldiers like stabbed Abdullah ibn Omar in the foot, and that led to his death. Maybe it was an infection or something like that, but it led to his death, radiAllahu anhu. And so that's kind of like a stain on on Hajjaj ibn Yusuf's legacy there, and Abdullah ibn Zubair. He reigned in Mecca since Muawiyah's death. So he never allowed Yazid to rule Mecca or Marwan. Um, so he was finally defeated by Marwan's son, Abdul Malik. And after that, Abdul Malik was recognized in all of the Umsar, all of the different garrisons, fortresses, military bases, you know, the places where the Arabs and Muslims lived around the uh, caliphate, the empire. He was recognized as Amir al-Mu'minin by everybody this time. And Hajjaj ibn Yusuf was made a commander or a governor of Iraq and Persia, Bilad al And he built Wasit between Basra and Kufa. Just in case either one of them would rebel. So in Wasit he put a bunch of loyal Syrian soldiers and that way, if either one of those cities rebelled, he could easily get to one or the other. And then uh, Abdul Malik died in 705 and was succeeded by his son, Al Walid. So Abdul Malik's kunya was naturally Abu Walid. And, but he's, he's also often called uh, Abu Muluk because so many of his sons would later go on to be Umayyad caliphs. And Abdul Malik, he was known to be a faqih. Uh, Muslim jurist and a scholar in his own right. Uh, it was thought that he was a hafiz of Quran. He memorized the entire Quran and he was the first caliph to have been born a Muslim. He was known to often fast and pray during the night time and it was Abdul Malik who first covered the Kaaba with a silk kiswa. He appointed his son Al Walid on his deathbed and made all the Umayyad governors pledge allegiance to Al-Walid. And he died at the age of 83 in the month of Shawwal from an unknown disease. So on Eid al-Fitr, he made all the governors uh, pledge allegiance to Al-Walid. So it was a smooth uh, transition of power uh, without anybody raiding the capital. So that's Abdul Malik bin Marwan who died in 705. Um, next, we will get to El Walid.